If you're new to guinea pigs, you might not know, or you might just be realizing that there's a heck of a lot of guinea pig breeds and hairstyles out there. And some of them don't even resemble guinea pigs as we traditionally think of them, but perhaps more like sheep or hedgehogs, or even something that you'd mop the floor with. But what new owners often don't think about is how the type of guinea pigs they decide to get or end up owning can affect the level of care required and even the relationship they have with their guinea pig. So this video is going to cover the pros and cons of different types and breeds of guinea pigs and I'm going to split them into three broad categories. We've got the smooth haired, the rough haired and the long haired. So we'll have a look at the differences between the three, what it's like to look after them and help you decide which one is best for you. And diving straight in with our first type, we have the smooth haired guinea pigs like our little Callie here. Smooth haired piggies are probably the most common one that you'll come across and they include a huge range of breeds from the classic Dutch guinea pigs, those with the stripes down their nose, to the all one colour self piggies. Then you've got bicolour piggies, tricolour piggies, agouti piggies, and then specific patterns like harlequin ones, Dalmatian piggies, and Himalayan or Californian guinea pigs like our Cali, where they have the cutest little smudge on their nose and then dark coloured ears and paws as well. So there are a huge range of patterns and colours within the smooth haired group and if you're looking for a specific colour, a specific pattern, then you are going to find it more easily with smooth haired guinea pigs. And you can find smooth haired guinea pigs pretty much everywhere from pet shops, breeders and rescues, but I would always encourage you to contact your local rescue before resorting to a breeder or a pet shop. Now another big pro of the smooth hair type is that they are very low maintenance. That short hair is what wild guinea pigs have, what they are used to grooming, and they can keep themselves clean and free of knots and tangles very easily all by themselves. So we don't need to intervene at all. Some websites you might read that they require brushing sometimes, but in my experience they don't really even need that. And smooth haired guinea pigs don't need baths unless they develop a skin problem or mites or lice, something that needs a bath to treat it, but in normal cases they will probably never need a bath. And of course linked to this is that you don't need to spend the time it takes to groom them and you can avoid the stress of it too, both on your part and your guinea pig's part. Because let's face it, most guinea pigs hate being given baths and they don't like being brushed or having their hair cut either. So you can avoid this completely with smooth haired guinea pigs, which might even help you bond with them better because you don't have to dread those activities that you both don't enjoy. There are a lot of pros for smooth haired guinea pigs. So another one which I have recently discovered myself is that smooth haired guinea pigs usually like being stroked more than other types of guinea pigs. And if you think about it, all the hair is growing in the same direction. And so when you stroke them down their back, it doesn't feel weird or anything for them. Of course, all guinea pigs are different, but in my experience, smooth haired guinea pigs will show that they like being stroked by lying down and if you're lucky they might even stretch out their front legs and do a little yawn for you. So because you've got less to do in terms of grooming and because handling might be a little bit easier then smooth haired guinea pigs might be better for children although I will always say that older children are far more suited to owning guinea pigs because regardless of what type of guinea pigs you end up owning they are still a huge huge commitment and require a lot of care on a daily basis. Now I will put Callie back in the cage for this so she doesn't have to hit it, but a potential con of smooth haired guinea pigs is that you might just love the look of, have your heart set on a different piggy with funky hair or even long hair. Perhaps you've owned smooth haired guinea pigs before and you're ready to try something different. And that brings me nicely onto the next category, which is the rough haired guinea pigs, like my piggies Phoebe and Roxy. The rough haired piggies are still a very common group of guinea pigs, and they include breeds such as the Abyssinian guinea pig, which is well known for its rosettes that go all along the body. They send the hair circling in all different directions, which is a really funky look. And then you also have the Swiss guinea pigs, Teddy and Rex guinea pigs. These ones have really coarse, dense hair that sort of sticks 
wakes up on end and gives them an adorable fuzzy appearance. And also in the rough haired group you have a lot of mixed breeds where they might have some characteristics from the smooth haired guinea pigs and also sometimes from long haired guinea pigs. Phoebe has short medium length hair all over her body and her hair is much coarser and rougher to touch whereas Roxy who is her sister and also mostly Abyssinian has completely different sleek smooth hair and she also has some longer hairs such as around her bottom <laughs> coming down from her ears and underneath on either side of her inside sort of where her armpits would be. <laughs> And in terms of grooming, rough haired guinea pigs are similar to smooth haired guinea pigs in that if they don't have any longer hair anywhere on their body, then chances are they don't need any extra help from us. The exception is if they do happen to have very fuzzy hair or some longer hair, maybe around their legs and their bottom, then they might develop some tangles or mats in there and you might have to do a little bit of trimming and cut those hairs away. But in general, rough haired guinea pigs won't need much extra grooming and they also won't need to be given baths. What I do find with my rough haired piggies though is that they might not enjoy being stroked and handled as much as the smooth haired varieties. And of course all guinea pigs are different but if you think about it, if they've got very coarse fuzzy hair or they've got rosettes which send the hair in different directions and they're being stroked along the length of their body and the hair's sort of being pushed in directions that it doesn't grow in, it might feel a little bit weird for them and they might not be as keen on being stroked. I do find this with Roxy and V it, but they still enjoy being stroked on their neck, the back of their head, kind of up from their nose. So it might just be that you need to be more aware of where your rough haired guinea pigs prefer being touched. Moving on now to our third category, which is the long haired guinea pigs. And I think one that people might be wondering more about in terms of how much extra care and grooming is needed for a long haired piggy. But firstly, let's take a look at the breeds. And this includes the Peruvian guinea pigs like our Pedro here. They have two rosettes on the back, which sends the hair in reverse up and over the face. And they can kind of develop this really cool fringe feature. Unless, of course, someone else comes and nibbles it off which is what has happened to Pedro lately which I'm disappointed at but it's something that can happen and something that I'll talk a little bit more about in a second. Other breeds that you have include Shelties or Silkies and then you also have curly varieties such as our Lunkayas, Texels and Merinos. Now in terms of grooming the answer is yes long haired guinea pigs are very high maintenance. There are some techniques you can use to make it so it's a bit easier to manage their long hair but but in general that hair length is not natural for them and they will struggle to groom it so much on their own. So one of the things that I think is really essential for any owner of long haired guinea pigs is to keep the hair short underneath along the sides and also around their bottom. You can still have longer hair that comes down over it and kind of covers it a little bit but in general you should be cutting that hair quite short to avoid it getting tangled, getting matted, soaking up pee and just causing problems and making your guinea pig feel less comfortable in general. Long haired guinea pigs, especially if they get dirty easily, might need occasional baths and they might also be more likely to develop skin problems which need baths to treat them. So you've got that long heavy hair which might lead to fungal infections and other skin problems more easily than in other types of guinea pig. And thinking about all that hair, long haired guinea pigs are also more likely to overheat and potentially suffer from flat strike if they are kept outside in hot countries. So definitely if you're in a hot country, there's no air conditioning, I would avoid keeping long haired guinea pigs because they'll really struggle in the heat. And in terms of brushing, I find that if you keep the hair shorter in those key areas, they won't need brushing on a daily basis. However, I'd probably brush them once a week or so. I'll just find what works for you and your guinea pig. So of course you've got that extra time and stress that comes with grooming, brushing and trimming back the hair and it might be harder for you to bond with your long haired guinea pig if they kind of associate you as someone that's always keeping on top of their hair and annoying them and trimming it back and stuff like that. But you will gain practice over time, you'll get more confident at it and it will gradually become a less stressful experience. And just as you might try to trim back the hair, some of their other cage mates might also have a go at this themselves. So this is what I mentioned in terms of Pedro losing his fringe and this is 
called barbering. And it can mean that other guinea pigs kind of nibble away the hair of long-haired guinea pigs in their cage and they don't do it evenly. <laughs> so it might be that they end up with hair of different lengths and of course with you trimming their hair back around their bottom, basically don't expect your long-haired guinea pigs to look like the photos that you'll see on the internet. It's just not practical to let the hair grow that long. However, the big question is, does this detract from how absolutely gorgeous and adorable long-haired piggies are? Let me know what you think in the comments below. Personally, although I love the look of long-haired piggies and I'm sure I'll always own at least one long-haired pig, they are a lot of work and that's why I don't have a herd of four long hairs. So because of all that, I'd probably not recommend long-haired guinea pigs for first-time owners and especially first-time owners that are children. So why not start off with smooth haired or rough haired varieties or just go to a rescue and see what guinea pigs look up at you and as soon as you see them regardless of what they look like then you just have to take them home and give them their forever home. Remember ultimately all guinea pigs are different and it's their personality that you fall in love with not the way that they look. So I hope this video has been useful guys and if you want any information on grooming in general then let me know in the comments down below. Also if you think I'm missing something and you want a video on the care of skinny pigs, Baldwin pigs and werewolf pigs, otherwise known as mostly hairless skinny pigs, then let me know and I can research that one for you too. Okay guys, as always, thank you so much for watching and we will see you very soon in the next one. Bye bye!